Welcome back to News Talk. Were you struck by how different the first Democratic presidential debate was from the Republican encounters that preceded it? It seemed a fairly striking difference. So that got us thinking. Aside from the individual performances of each night, which party is benefiting most from the debate so far? Joining us now with thoughts on this, Patrick Mara, head of the D.C. Republican Party, and Doug Sloan, a Democratic political campaign strategist. Great to have both of you here. Thanks Doug, having, having watched every minute of all the debates, I think all three of us have, and many, of course many of the people watching uh, a show like this one have as well, were you struck sitting at home or wherever you were watching the debate thinking, <clears throat> This is really different than what we've been seeing so far, with the Republicans move, going uh, much earlier and more often with their debates so far. Yeah, yeah, and I think that this was, uh, you know, this seemed like the adult table. You know, we saw a reasonable, mature exchange of ideas and solutions regarding some of the nation's problems. No, there was no name calling. Everyone was very friendly, congenial. We saw even uh, uh, Senator Sanders came in and said, "Hey, Hillary, we're sick and tired of hearing about those damn emails." You know, so it was really a friendly atmosphere, and we really had a great exchange of ideas. So I, I think that was a stark contrast with what we saw with the Republican debate in. Donald Trump up there, uh, what were they called, the, the carnival barker. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, Patrick Mara, I can't, I can't imagine you endorse that con the contrast that Doug offers. How do you see it? Well, I think, I think the Democratic debate was more or less a, a send-off for Secretary Clinton. Um, it's, it's game over there. I mean, most of the people on that stage were positioning themselves for a cabinet position at this point. Uh, ideally, I'm sure some of them would love to be her vice presidential nominee, but that probably wouldn't be the best idea. Um, the, the people up there on the Democratic stage, uh, minus Secretary Clinton, it's almost like the minor leagues. Uh, whereas if you look at the Republican debate, regardless of your ideology, you have governors of, of big, you know, literally you have a governor of New York who's on, not even on the first stage. You have multiple senators. You have diversity. You have, I mean, it's, it's a completely different world. But are you worried that some of what Doug referenced uh, a moment ago will be an impression that hits uh, particularly voters who could go either way. So many voters, they're voting for the blue, they're voting for the red, regardless. Uh, but for, the, for folks who weigh and are somewhat undecided until deeper into the process, maybe until they're in the voting booth, are you worried about the narrative he just uh, laid out for us? I mean, I think you're saying on the Republican side, I, I think this... Well, he called it the grown-up table. Sure, sure. It was congenial. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it was relaxed. It's, it was a thoughtful discussion of policy ideas. Doug Sloan's a great guy, but he's, he's a little bit, you know, he's a little bit partisan. So. No, no, I get that. Uh, but, 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 but I'm asking, are you worried, based on what you saw, that, that the takeaway he describes might be out not, there? Not at this point, because on the Republican side, you actually, there was a debate. So you have people that prepped on the Republican side. You have people that prepared uh, little attacks on opponents. They attack specific people. Um, on the Democratic side, it was more or less outside of... Uh, Secretary Clinton, who was obviously the most prepared there up on the stage, you know, she attacked uh, Bernie, Senator Sanders, on the N his NRA issue. But other than that, it was just one big love fest. Um, it was completely different than the Republican debate. And so I think for the the Democrats at this point are almost all in on Secretary Clinton, which could be a problem if Secretary Clinton, if there are issues, for instance, related to the email, which Republicans care very much about. Generally speaking, Democrats care a heck of a lot less about. The one key way that uh, the Democratic contest differs from the Republican contest is that, you know, depending on your view of these things, Hillary Clinton is debating the JV while yep. the Republican field is much larger and much more sort of evenly matched in terms of background uh, and, and viability, one might say. So maybe we don't want to get too far out on the diving board in terms of comparison. Well, I'll take issue with that regarding uh, debating the JV. I think uh, Martin O'Malley in particular did a, a great job. He did attack... Uh, uh, Senator Sanders, so there was a little bit more uh, back and forth there I regarding his record on gun control. <laughs> he, he did great uh, regarding he, as Maryland governor, he introduced some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. There was back and forth with uh, Sanders and him about, you know, Sanders said, well, uh, listen, you're not from a, a conservative or rural state. And he said, have you ever been to Western Berlin? Have you ever been to the Eastern Shore? And he said, well, and then Sanders came back and said, well, you know, I'm in Congress and the NRA uh, has a lot of influence there. He says, well, maybe we don't need someone from Congress. Maybe we do need a fresh perspective. So I think O'Malley did a great job regarding uh, his comeback regarding the NRA. He mentioned Glass-Steagall. He was also great on climate change. 
speech. And also Lincoln Chafee uh, attacked Hillary Clinton uh, on, uh, you know, having a clean record, not having any baggage. So right. I do think that, you know, we did see a little back and forth there. And the Republican debate was a little thin on policy details. Which, sure. which, which, I mean, we, but we see how well the Lincoln Chafee attack went over. I mean, again, it's the whole audience. It backfired on Lincoln Chafee when he was doing his little feeble attack on <laughs> Senator Clinton. I mean, most everyone on that stage outside of Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders would be on the happy hour stage at the Republican debate. And if you had said a few months ago that Senator Sanders is in second place, I don't know that you'd know a single person that's a credible uh, political pundit in the D.C. area that would say that Senator Sanders is in the running for the nomination of the Democratic Party. And that's a, that's a really big issue. So I think with that situation, the Democratic establishment has to be thinking to themselves, it's time to call less around, around Secretary yeah, Clinton yeah, yeah, because yeah. this could be a nightmare. And to dovetail with what you just said, Patrick, Bernie Sanders isn't even a Democrat. I mean, I, I think <laughs> one of the undercovered aspects of this is if you want the nomination of a party, I mean, the top thing there is in a party, shouldn't you join? I I'm in full agreement with that, and uh, I'm not a, a big Sanders supporter at this point, although I do like a lot of his ideas. But uh, I, I will say this uh, uh, regarding uh, some of the issues there, and, and Lincoln Chafley uh, uh, did have uh, his, uh, that was, I guess that was our comedy moment there in the Democratic debate. But, you know, we, we could have been having this same conversation back in 2007 regarding Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. And you had been saying the same thing about Barack Obama in 2007 as you're saying about Sanders no, now. No, Politics is no, a theater. No, of the unexpected. We never know what's going to happen. Senate, Hillary did have the lead back then. It, she was the consensus pick candidate. In 2007, through, but you and, saw you know, a debate. The, they had met, what, 20 something debates in 2007, 2008? I did. I did. Uh, now President Obama was actually debating. They were attacking, they were fighting, they were arguing about policy. Whereas this debate that we saw, which was extremely orchestrated, it was just one big love fest. On the other side, well, uh, they haven't orchestrated I, it the I mean, same way. <laughs> if, if embedded in there is criticism of Anderson Cooper or the way the, the event unfolded, I thought Anderson Cooper did a great job. I think and he the, did a great job. And the job. consensus is that the questions were very, very good, very tough, very appropriate. Yeah, I would never attack questions. a member of the media. <laughs> uh, but I think on that, just a little subtle attack would be who, we, who the questioners were and the topics, and this has been well covered who now the in the media. Were? Well, because it's like, let's have the... Uh, Latina ask about immigration and let's have you know let's have the African American male ask about Black Lives Matter. I mean it was just that I thought was a little it was a little over the top. Patrick, Doug, stand by for just a moment. We're going to hold you guys over for another segment. We'll take a break here. We'll come back with more of our conversation here on News Talk with Patrick Mara, Doug Sloan. Keep it here.